What's up everybody, back with another Eternal Evolution video. This is part two of my 10 beginner tips, so it will be a continuation jumping straight into it, no time wasted. If you haven't seen part one, all the info is in the video description. Let's get this going and let's get it. Tip number six is gonna be manual combat. Now, personally, if you're like me, I hate manual. I like to auto all the way. Um, if I do fail the stage, I'll probably just spend a little bit more so I can get a little bit stronger so I can continue to auto. I don't know why, I just don't like manual in combat unless I absolutely need to. But if we go to the campaign as an example, we go to challenge. Uh, for this stage right here, when failing a stage in any content, um, what you're gonna wanna do is try manualing the hero's ultimates. So for this stage, I just hit challenge and then uh, we're gonna let it load. And then I go look at auto. So they're all on auto. So if I just let this play out and you're going to see, I probably get absolutely steamrolled. I found that once you get into the later chapters, um, that the, the enemies hit super, super hard. But then again, I did use Northeon as a cheat code and he kind of helped me progress. And actually, you know what? Look, I just, boom, I won. Northeon is absolutely broken. I mean, you can just look by the damage right there. Um, but for the next stage, we're just going to manual it just so I can just show you as an example. Okay, so for this stage, so maybe I failed it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into challenge. You can either auto all of them off or you can keep it on auto, but you can just turn off uh, specific heroes. So for me, I want to turn off maybe Rez. I want to turn off Northeon. And that's good for now because the reason for this is there's actually a very small delay if you have this on auto and your hero goes up to ultimate. So right here, my Leo, you can see it was kind of a delay. It was kind of delayed right there. That small second delay could be the reason why you're failing. Maybe you don't get a heal off in time. Maybe your heroes has something special, like they take no damage, but then you didn't click it and they got insta one shotted, stuff like that. So that's why putting it on manual can be helpful. Um, and also for certain heroes like Rez, I can choose which hero I want to give energy to based off how Rez's ultimate works. You can also put him in the same row as the hero. And then if it's on auto, then he'll just give that hero uh, the energy. But yeah, manualing is one way to do it. Um, you can also do um, skills in specific areas like say, I don't know, let's just say I, I put in the yellow tank chick. I still call her by that, but Oisa, I think that's how you say it. So her ultimate, what the, her ultimate does is does an AOE stun. Hopefully she doesn't just instantly die. She probably will. I should have put her in the back line for this. Okay, so what? So for example, if I had this on auto, then it's just going to put it anywhere. I don't know where it's going to be. It could be right in front of me. It could be off to the side. I don't know. But if I have this on manual, then I'm able to determine where this radius is going to be. And what her ultimate does is does a brief stun. So for that brief stun, that's going to buy my team time that they're not taking damage. So if I just put it, maybe like I try to highlight as many enemies as I can. Let's just say, I don't know, for example, I put it here. There we go. I, I just briefly stunned all those enemies. Tip number seven is hero banners. Don't fall into the mindset of, oh, I'm just going to get this hero again. So if we open up the base and I go into recruitment center, uh, say my mindset is like, oh, Miranda, it's a new triple S hero. And maybe I have 60 limited tickets and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to pass on her for now. You know, there's other heroes I want to get. But the problem with this and another video I want to make is that uh, if this hero is beneficial or broken, get at least one copy. You will not regret this. Um, there is a pity of 60. So just get those 60 limited summons in and get that hero. I know it may not always be possible depending on like what stage of the game you're in, if you're free to play, and maybe if you're a low spender, and then there was a banner previously that you just went all in on, but certain heroes you can't pass up at least that one copy because the return hero banner probability rate is in this game is terrible. It is so bad. That means you're gonna have to leave it up to fate so that you see that copy in the exchange shop. So like I mentioned about that data chip thing about the one to one ratio, um, that like you may never see that hero in the exchange shop, even though there is two banners. So that means there is two different exchange shops. You may never see that hero for weeks, for months. You don't know. It's up to fate. It's up to the devs to put them back in there. Or it may also be a long time before that hero um, has their own banner again. So take the hit, 
use your limited tickets, then at least you can use gene hybrids on that hero. Here's an image quickly to show the first couple of weeks rotation to get an idea. Um, and then also some notable heroes to be on the lookout for is going to be Northion, Daniel, and Leo. Tip number eight is going to be the outpost missions. So I didn't do mine specifically for this tip video. The problem with this, when you click on quick dispatch, this may not always give you the best option. And then in doing so may not give you the best return value. So if I click on this rest in peace mission right here for a four star soul rubelite, if I click on dispatch, the highest reward bonus requires hero quality legend. That means I'm going to need three heroes of legend quality in order to get the max bonus. So if I hit quick deploy, you can see right here the max bonus is going to be 60%. But this may be good when you have like a uh, filled out ascended roster. Sure, yeah, this is good. But for new players early game, I would definitely manual this. So if I just back out quickly and then I click back in, um, I would just choose the heroes because the reason for this is you get to choose the best outcome. If you need to wait, uh, if you need to wait till one mission is done in order to max this out for the bonus outcome, I would recommend doing so because maybe for this one, you need three legend heroes and then you click on the next one. You also need three legend heroes, but then you don't have any more because you use them. Now the bonus is going to be a lot less. So if I quick deploy this 60%, maybe I don't have all legend heroes now and I click on some of these, you can see right here, um, 18%, uh, 60% compared to 18%. That's a loss. And that's something I don't want, especially when starting out because that's going to hurt my progression. So just double check this if you are quick deploying, uh, because there are times even with my account where I'm at the point now where I do have like a decently filled out roster that if I click on a uh, quick deploy here, 60%, um, hopefully I can find a good example. Um, and then we're going to go click on this one, 30%. I'm trying to find, uh, an example where even with my kind of a roster, um, it still doesn't always make the best choice. So this one's fine. Um, this one's fine. Generally, I try to go for three star or better. Um, anything below that, I don't need gold. I find gold in this game, you get a lot of it. As long as you're not in the shop buying that soul rubelite that I mentioned earlier when it just becomes outrageously expensive. But uh, I'll usually refresh this and see what I can get here. And that's probably another refresh. Okay, so right here, let's see what this one gives me. So this one's 75%. They're all immortal. So that's fine. Um, maybe this one. So right here's an example. You need two mythic quality heroes in order to get the max bonus. So I hit quick deploy and it put in my Luke who is not at mythic quality. But if I click him out and then I click the box to manually find a hero and then you can see, oh, look, I do have a couple heroes here who are mythic quality or better. I got Raka something. That's another immortal. And then if I put that in, Look at my bonus reward. It went up in percentage. So right there, it's at 30%. But if I hit quick deploy, then it's only at 25%. For me, any percentage lost is a percentage lost. It doesn't matter if it's only 1%, 2%. I don't look at it like that. Um, I'm trying to max out everything. So this is just something that I found out that seems to be a little weird in the game. So just be mindful when you're doing the outpost missions. Tip number nine is going to be join a guild early, um, preferably level three. And the reason for that is because at level three, um, your guild is going to unlock a guild hunt and uh, depending how many bosses your guild can defeat uh, Depending on how much damage you can do uh, It's going to determine your overall rewards But the main thing is is you're going to open up the hunt achievements and you're going to be able to get a lot of stuff here They give gene hybrid shards. You're going to also be getting these gene breakthrough cores, which i'll get to in a second You have uh, total damage in a guild hunt. You have single damage in a guild hunt You got some advanced tickets. You got some limited tickets there's a lot of good stuff here and you need 60 gene hybrid shards to be able to turn this into one full one. So that will allow you to use any hero dupe in the game. You also have access, uh, let me click out of this, to the guild technology. And what this is going to do is give you a lot of stats. Um, I didn't know this, but you get a lot of stats from here and it's very easy to skill these up. It does take some time eventually the more you do it. But like if we go down to like my energy hero, I maxed out the attack and that's an extra 49% attack. If we look at my uh, crit damage, that's an extra 23%. If I upgrade this, it's going to be an extra 28%. So the values here are actually very good. Uh, so you can do it for support, hunter, assassin. You can do it for all the different classes in the game. I would just do it based off your best hero. So for me at the time, it's going to be the Nord King. So that's why I went with energy first. Now you can reset these, um, but you do need a gene reset device. 
And uh, I'm going to be honest with you, I have no idea where to get this. I never really took the time to look. If you click on it, I can't really say uh, you got to go here. I would I thought it would be in the actual guild shop. So like if I went, uh, if I clicked out of this and then I went into the guild shop, I thought it would be here, but it's not. So this may very well be a paid item. I don't know. Comment down below if you know where it is. So that's important if it is a paid item to be mindful of the class that you start investing into. Uh, because the first couple of levels, like up to five, it's very easy to get this. Um, if we go into one that, I, is there any that I haven't done? I'm per, okay, right here. You can see it only takes 20, 20 of these gene modules. And these are the basic currency. You'll get a lot of these to level them up. And it's very cheap to get them up to level five. It's only when you break through to the next tier, uh, when you have to use these gene breakthrough cores, where you just have to make sure that you're smart with your decisions. And finally, tip number 10 is going to be the ancient altar. When you're first starting out, you may think, oh, wow, let me click on this. What is this? Uh, this looks awesome. This this looks like you can get some rewards. If we click on challenge, oh, there's different bosses. Oh, my God, is this like an this is like an awesome world weekly boss? I better get my hits in. Well, don't. That is the mistake I made when I first started out. Uh, you don't want to do this early on in the week. This game mode resets every Sunday and then settlement rewards are handed out. So it's in your best interest to wait till the end of the reset or as close to it as you can to get your five hits in because you do get uh, five challenge tickets and that's it. You only get five challenge tickets. I didn't know that. I thought these like refreshed every day or something like that when I first started out. So you only get five. So you're going to want to wait till the end of the week because then you're going to be able to get stronger. You're most likely going to be able to push further than if you just used all your attacks early on in the week. So you're going to want to start with the easiest difficulty, which is going to be novice. And then you're just going to want to work your way up. Um, it's important to do your best to defeat the boss because if, let's just say we click on easy, for example, and I click on milestones and I go to, let's just say I go to easy. There's going to be different milestones. So you can see for your 280 K that's level one. 820k that's level 2, 1.9 million that's level 3, 3.3 million is level 4. Now if you do reach level 4 but you don't actually defeat the boss because that is possible where you reach this milestone but you don't defeat the boss, you will still get these milestone rewards. However, if you defeat the boss, these milestone rewards will be doubled. Now it doesn't do it. Now it looks like it doesn't do it for easy, but if you click on normal, you're going to have two settlement rewards if you defeat the boss. Then hard same thing, hell same thing. So this is a lot of potential rewards you're going to be able to get if you were able to defeat the boss. This makes this a valuable resource specifically for limited tickets for those limited summons when you start defeating easy difficulty or higher. Uh, because that's when they start to drop on novice you don't get any but on easy you get between two to three normal you get three to four hard you get four to six and then hell you get six to eight on the final milestone reward so if you were able to down these bosses so let's just look at my hits for example so right now i was able to defeat hell hard normal and easy i was very close to one keying hell i think i left him with like five million hp let's just say i get the bare minimum so six I'm going to get 12 from here. I'm going to get uh, another eight. So that's going to be 20 normal. I'm going to get six. So that's going to be 26. Then from easy, I'm going to get two. So then now that's 28 right there. That's a minimum of 28 limited tickets every single week. And if you think about it, a pity is 60. That's already almost halfway to 60 on a limited banner. This is very, very generous. This game also get achievements, which are just a one time reward, similar to the guild hunt achievements that I showed you. And you can get a lot of limited tickets here as well. So that's it. Those are my 10 beginner tips. Um, if you have any other helpful ones um, that I may have missed, be sure to comment down below so other players can see. Hopefully at least one of these tips help you on your beginner journey into eternal evolution as always thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one